Hello dear Touch Designer developers, in this tutorial we will learn how to use a software called PostShot to create 3D scans from our videos and image sets. After creating the model, we learn how to refine it and make it ready for further manipulations in Touch Designer. So let's start creating. We need to download PostShot from their website. So, simply search for PostShot in Google and head to the download page. Now, open the PostShot. To use the software we need to create a PostShot account. After logging into your account, you can head to the software and start using it. Let's import a subject's video to start creating its 3D model. I found this ship's footage on YouTube and I want to create its scan. To create a proper scan, it's better to use unedited raw footages. To import the video into PostShot, simply drag and drop it inside the software. Now, let me open the user guide to see what each parameter in training section tells us. When you drop the video inside PostShot, training configuration window pops up. First thing that you can see is the path to the video you imported. Image selection let you use your own set of images for the scan or let the software choose best frames. And in max image count, you can specify how many of those selected images to be used in 3DGS training. The value shouldn't be less than 100, let the software choose the number. Camera poses helps with calculating camera's position related to the scene through time. Nothing to change here. Just consider number of features shouldn't be less than 4K. Let's head to Radiance Field Profile. There are two splat profiles that we can use. We mostly use MCMC. If you needed to have more control over details of your scene, you can test ADC Profile. Down Samples section let you decrease or increase selected images resolution. More resolution leads to more detail and it's more expensive for your computer. Max splat count controls number of splats that the training will produce. You can change it during the training if the model is not detailed enough. I always set it between 1500 and 2000 depending on the scene. Final step is setting number of steps the training will take. I set it between 15,000 and 20k based on level of detail I need in my model. Hit import and the training will start. Our model is ready. As we zoom out, we see that there are many unwanted splats that need to be cleaned. Refining splats makes your final export lighter and easier to work with. On the left toolbar, you can see a circle with a cursor on it. That's the splat selector. Now select the scene that you want in your model. From right side in parameter section, click on invert selection and after that click on delete selected splats. We deleted most of unwanted splats, now it's time to take a closer look and refine it in detail. Do last step again till the result satisfies you. From Scene section on the right, select Radiance Field and head to Parameters and look at Edit section. There you can transform your shape. From the top bar, head to File menu and select Export Radiance Fields, choose a path and a name and you are done. 
For further exploration in this scan project, also save the project file. Drag and drop the model file into the touch designer. Add a null. Let's check the model we exported fast, select the null. Hit A to make the viewer active and hit V for point view. We need to rotate and center the model. So, add a point transform behind the null. Using transform page, you can play with your point cloud's position and rotation. Let's work on our model's color. To extract color from our model file, we need to add point file select. 3DGS file store color with F underscore DC prefix. Set correct value for R, G, and B. Add a null. Name our null's position and color. In palette, find point clouds and grab point render tool from there. This let you easily visualize your point clouds. Change the resolution to your desired value. Connect position to the first input. Make point render viewers active to check our point clouds render. Now let's connect the color. Add a null and the transform up after the point render. In transform, set the background alpha to 1 and turn comp over background on. Now you have your 3D model out of a short video, visualized in Touch Designer. Let's play. Make some room for the manipulation setup. Add a null after the point transform and call it points, then add a noise after that. Connect points to both inputs of the noise. Set the offset to zero and turn off the monochrome. From output page, decrease the noise scale. Change the noise type and animate it in transform page using abstime command. Add a threshold two points in a separate branch. Change RGB to green. In a separate branch, add a mat two points. Connect threshold to mat's third input and noise to the second input. Now connect the mat to our position null and set the mat channel to red. Now, play with threshold. To see manipulation thresholds edge more clear, let's add a rectangle to act as an indicator. For that, we should head inside Point Render Tool. Add a rectangle SOP and change its size. Connect it to a null and connect a geometry to the null SOP. Add a constant material and drop it on the geometry and choose material. Set the color to red and from the common page, choose topology for wireframe type. Add subdivide behind the null and increase its depth. From threshold, drag threshold's value and drop it on our rectangle geometry's y-axis translate. Now let's create same matte setup for our color network. Instead of noise, we can use the color that we want to see in manipulated area as matte seconds input.
use the threshold for this mat too. Play with threshold parameters and see what happens. To visualize our model in Gaussian splats, we need to use 3D Gaussian splatting tool. Search for 3D Gaussian splatting in Touch Designer and you'll find the link to Tim Gerritsen's 3D GS Toolkit. Download the tox and drop it into your network. Head inside the toolkit. First of all, add an out to be G null. That let you use the visual from outside of the comp. Then, select the Gaussian Splat Comp and set the path to your model file. Hit Reload Pulse. Now, right-click on the camera viewport and select View. Now you can observe the Gaussian Splatting model. Play with parameters on Gaussian Splat Comp to see how splats change. Now I want my Gaussian splats has same orientation as previous point cloud we created. Head to the previous point cloud network and select the point transform operator. From transform page, drag and drop translate and rotate values on the Gaussian splat comps T and our parameters and choose to only export values. Let's start manipulating the Gaussian Splat model. Head into Gaussian Splat Comp, make some space after input nodes. Add a null behind the position null. Now, after the null we added, we start creating our previous threshold and map manipulation setup. I forgot to change thresholds or GB to green, it took some time, anyway. Now the setup is working and we are controlling the noise manipulation on our Gaussian splat model. Create same mat setup for splat's color. We need to apply manipulations after the calculator comp. I want to use a very simple example just to show how the controlled manipulation works on splat's color. So, I'm just using the position data for the manipulation region. I'm normalizing the color using a limit top by turning the normalize on. You can invert the armat's mask using the switch input inside mat top. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you find it useful, subscribe and share it with those who'll like it. Your support means a lot to me. See you on next tutorial. Bye bye.